Oh, this is a pretty hip back on how to play. Today we're looking at this relatively new trick taking game by Rio Grande Games and Tom Lehman called Holly Oak. I think Tom is known for his trick taking games and this one's pretty cool. It's all about mastering the changing seasons. It is for three to five players or revelers as they call them. And it's all about the Celtic Oak and Holly Kings, which you see depicted on these cards. The, the deck has 45 cards, 9 in or 10 and 11 in each seat. They go from 0 through 10, kind of like a regular deck of cards, more or less. And you got the four suits you got winter, fall, spring. And summer. Each suit has cards that are going to add up to two points total. These ones in the spring and fall are worth one point each, the zero and the seven, indicated by the stars. And in the winter and summer, you got the nines, which are worth two points each, indicated by the two stars. These cards are Easy to identify because they got borders around the index and they got the stars. They also got the, the kings on there. If you win a trick with those, you're going to score points. You also got this card, which is the, uh, it's a half basically. It is the season retreats card. It's like an hourglass and it kind of reverses the seasons. You also get reference cards, one per player, five of them, which has all the information you would really need on there. It's a more or less straightforward trick taking game, but with some twists. You also get all of these for scoring purposes. There's 25 of these red ones, which are worth one point each. And there is 10 of these big brown ones, which are worth five points each. I would not leave these around young children if I think those are candy and they might eat them. You don't want that. <laughs> Just, you know, as a warning. So, stuff this in there. One more card I didn't mention that's kind of important, relatively important, I would say, and that is the one of spring. As you can see, it has a white number, and as you can see, whoever gets this becomes the star player. 11 cards in each of the four seasons. 0 through 10. Plus the season retreats card. If you are doing, I believe it is, four players. Yes. If you're doing four players, you have to remove one card. And that is the 0 of winter. You just won't use that one so that you can divide the cards evenly. Uh, that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'll do three player setup. Cards just have a smooth finish to them. No linen or anything. It's a bit unfortunate, but it is what it is. Excuse me. So whoever has the green one gets to start, and they get to start with that card. It's going to be this guy. And he's going to play that card. Everyone else must follow suit if possible. Just like any trick taking in, so I'm gonna go and I will play. I'll play the 10, I guess. And this guy's gonna go and he will play the 5. Since I win the trick, I get to collect the cards and keep them in front of me, and I get to lead the next one. Now, when you lead the next trick, you always have to lead. With either the suit that was just played, the season that was just played, or the following season. So in this case, it was spring, so I can play spring, which I think I will, or I could play summer. If I don't have either spring or summer, I would lose the opportunity to lead, and the next player would get to lead. If at some point in time you go around the table and nobody has the suit or the following the the season. That's currently in play, or the following season, or the retreats card, season retreats card, then it 
you declare that everyone is out of season and you end the round, everyone discards the rest of the cards that they have in their hands and you score points based on these stars. But I do have Swing, so I will play it. This guy will play. He has no choice but to play a seven. You must follow if you have. And this guy will play. He's just going to play a two. So I win the trick. I get the seven, which is going to be worth a point. That's the red guy. After. So then I play again. I'm going to again lead with a green card. Now, this guy does not have a spring. So there's three things he can do. A, he can basically, well, two things he can basically do. One, he can just play any card he wants. If he wants to, he can also play this season retreats card. What this does when you play it is it changes the season to the preceding season. So in this case, you'd be changing the season from spring back to winter. That's what this card does. It's also worth half a point more, I guess, than the whatever number card is there, I do believe. Yeah, it's, this is basically worth half a point in the new season. So this is basically less than a one in the new season. But he's not going to do that. What he can also do, like I said, he can play any season. So he can play this blue zero and it doesn't affect anything. However, if he plays the following season, like say spring or summer, sorry. So let's say he plays the eight of summer. He has now changed the suit that we're currently following to the summer. So now this player must, if he has play summer, which he does, if he doesn't, again, he can play any other suit. He can even change this to winter, but he does have summer, so he's gonna play summer. So since he changed the season by playing the following season, he wins the trick because he played the highest of the suit that was currently in play, the season that was currently in play. So now he's gonna play. You can always lead with the season retreats card if you have nothing else to play. He has to play summer or fall in this case. So he will play summer. This guy does not have summer now, so he can play either the following season, which will change it to the fall, or he can just play anything. Playing anything, like he could play this, and I just gets rid of a small card. It's a good way to get rid of some useless cards. But let's say he decides to play the seven and hope that I don't have a higher card. He is lucky because I do not. So I'm just going to play this card here and he wins the trick and he's going to score his points. So you keep going around a game until you have played out all your cards or until you get to the Unfortunate possibility of nobody being able to lead is again, if you don't have in this case, you would have to lead with fall or winter or play a season retreats card. If he does have those, so he can lead the next trick. So maybe he will play this. And then I will play. I have no choice but to really play this one or give him a point. And this guy says, you know what, I'll just play the small one. And he wins the trick. This one is not worth any points because it doesn't have any stars. He gets to lead the next one. Maybe he decides to change it to the winter seat. Because he can do that. Unfortunately for him, I do have a 10. And this guy's going to go. He's going to follow the current season. Or will he? Actually, he has to, because he has it. He has no choice but to play it, so he will. And I win this one. And as I said, you keep going around the table until you've played all your cards, or you're not able to play anymore. And then you score points. So I currently have two, three with the stars. Let's say the game ended right now. And uh, I would get one, two, three. And the other players, well, look at this guy. This guy currently has none. This guy has one, so you get one. 
there is other ways to score points as well. One other way, specifically, and that is if you don't win any tricks, you can score points. So this guy, if, let's say he doesn't win any tricks during this round. Let's say he didn't win any. It's difficult to do with three players. But not impossible. So he would score... points so if you don't take any tricks in a free player game you get eight points two in a four player game you get five points and in a five player game because it's easier to do you get three points so he would get if he did that he would get eight points but it's really hard to do in a free player game. That's why it's worth a lot of points. If you do it in a five player game, it's much easier to do, so it's worth less points. You're gonna keep playing, going around until somebody has hit at least 15 points in a free player game, 13 in a four player game, or 10 points in a five player game. Once somebody has hit that many points, whoever has the most points, in case more than one person does it, Wins the game. If there's a tie, you look at who scored the most points in that final round. In this case, it would be him. He scored eight. If this was the final round. And uh, if there's still a tie, then tie players just win. It's an interesting game about the changing seasons. I like that. Playing different seasons can change the outcome of rounds. Maybe you think you're going to win a trick and somebody changes the season. And they steal it from you. They steal the points. It's it's very unique. I like it. Pretty decent quality for what it is. And uh, nice artwork and everything. Pretty cool. That is Holly Oak. Hopefully you like it. Comment, like, subscribe. Let me know what you think. These reference cards have all the details, like I said. There's your scoring conditions and everything. And yeah. Very nice. So that's that. See ya. Thanks for watching.